Hi everyone, my name is Xiang Ming and I will be presenting our work Default Cyber Level Resistance Against Differential Fault Attack. This is the outline of my talk. So we will start with the introduction, followed by our main contribution, the DFA Resistance Framework, and followed by the default, which is an instantiation of the DFA Resistance Framework. So first for the introduction. The fault attack is a form of side channel attack where the adversary will inject an external force to alter the internal computation of algo, resulting in faulty output. And the differential fault attack is a subclass of fault attack that collects and compares the regular and faulty output from the same from a same input. So for example, the during the first computation, we have the regular encryption from plain text to ciphertext. And during the second computation, for the same, same plain text, the attacker will inject some fault to result in a different ciphertext, which is the faulty output. And from this pair of ciphertext, they will try to recover the secret key K. There are existing, existing differential fault attack countermeasures. One of it is the fault protection. So given the block cipher circuit, we can put a layer of shoe, physical shoe or casing over it to protect against the fault injection. So during the computation, even when the adversary tries to inject a fault, this shoe will protect against uh, altering of the computation. But such a countermeasure is usually the is a engineering solution and it is outside the scope of the cryptography design. Another way is through fault detection. For example, to have a duplicate computation. So for the for a given plain text, it will be input to both the the encryption to compute the ciphertext and it will check if both ciphertexts are the same. So if an adversary injects a fault in one of them, then during the check of the ciphertext, it will detect that there's a, it's different and there's a fault, and you will not produce an output. Another way is to incorporate some form of error detection code in the algorithm, so, so that when a fault is injected, the error correction, error detection code will be able to pick up that there's some error in it, and then it will not give any output as well. So this is another way to deter, to, to prevent the attacker from, from getting the desired ciphertext to, to recover the key. However, such methods could also be defeated by more advanced adversary. For example, for the duplicate comp computation, if the attacker can also do a duplicate fault to have to inject the fault at the exact same position, resulting in the exact same fault outputs, then with the check, you will still recognize it as the same result and continue to output the faulty result. And for the exam for the case of the error detection code. If the fault is large enough and beyond the detectable bound of the error detection code, then you will not be able to pick up the error and you will also output the faulty output. So in both cases, in both exa uh, examples, it could be overcome if the fault is beyond the detection capability of the countermeasure. So our main contribution here is to propose a fault resilient uh, method. So and first thing it is a cipher level solution so we do not have to rely on engineering solution and it can be applied to existing block ciphers to protect against the DFA and the high-level idea is 
to impose a, a lower bound on the search complexity of the DFA. So we do let the adversary to inject the fault and receive whatever ciphertext they want. But even with the set of ciphertext, they are going to have multiple key candidates. And we are, our main work is to, low, to give a lower bound on this uh, key candidate space. The next I'll talk about the DFA resistant framework. But before that, I will give a quick recap on the Xbox properties. So an NB Xbox is a essentially a lookup table that maps some X value to another Y value. And given an input and an output and a valid output difference say the small delta and the capital delta, a sol uh, x is a solution if it satisfies this equation over here. So if you have a small difference delta and you get the resultant uh, large delta, then x is a solution to it. And here you can see that if x is a solution, then X XOR small delta is also a solution. You simply just flip the uh, computation here. So solution will always come in pairs. And for designer, when designer want to protect against the classical differential crit analysis, usually we'll minimize the number of solution uh, from this form of uh, differential property. But minimizing the number of solutions actually makes the DFA easier. So to give an example, so if we zoom in to the last round of this uh, block cipher and we zoom in to one particular S box position, so the adversary can see the cipher text, but because there's some sub key XOR to it. So the output of the S box is unknown. Similarly for the input of the S box is also unknown. So what the adversary can do is to inject a fault at the X value here to produce some difference small delta. And you can observe the output difference, the big delta from the ciphertext here. Since the sub-key addition is constant, so the difference will be the same. And through this small delta, large delta differences and the property of the S-box, the adversary can obtain the possible solution for X. And from there, he can compute the possible value for Y. And XORing the ciphertext, you will get uh, the possible sub-key solutions. And if the adversary were to repeat this process for different delta, then they will, he will get a, several different sub-key candidates. And the correct key, the correct keys, the correct sub-key K will be an intersection of all these uh, sub-key candidates. So if the number of solution is small, then with probably two or three set of sub-key candidates, the adversary can recover the unique key, unique sub-key already. Our idea is to prevent the adversary from obtaining a unique sub-key solution. And we do that through the linear structure of S boxes. So an element A is a linear structure of S box S, if for some constant B, we have this formula holds for all possible Z value. And if X is a solution for some input output difference, small delta and large delta, then we know that X XOR A will also be a solution as well. So you can see that from the following formula, sorry, for the following equation. 
So by the above definition, the S X X L A can be rewritten as S X X L B, similarly for the other one. And the constant B can be cancelled off and we will get S X X L S X X L small delta. And since we know small delta, sorry, since we know X is the solution for small delta, large delta, then this will become, this is equal to large delta. So it shows that X, X, or A is also a solution as well. So if A is non-zero, then the intersection of the key candidates will not give us a unique solution because for any input output difference, when there is a solution X, 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 or A is also a solution as well. So when you repeat the attack from before, when you get a key candidate, the same can when you get a key candidate K, K, X, or A is also another possible key candidate. So that is for single S box. Now, if you consider the entire block cipher for one to a bit state size, if we use four bit S box, then there will be 32 four bit S boxes. And for regular S box, regular S boxes, there is only one linear structure, which is the A equals to zero, which is a trivial linear structure. Then it is possible for the adversary to find a unique solution and the key space is just one. But if we have a, as we see before, if we have a linear structure A, then there's guaranteed to have at least two solution per S box, no matter how many intersection you do, then the key space is now two to the 32. And if you have four linear structures, then you can even achieve two to the 64 key candidates. So this increases the attack complexity for the adversary, because no matter how many faults they inject, how many, no matter how many intersections they try to do, they will always have a, a set of solutions. And if we consider 8-bit as box, because of the size, we are able to have even more linear structures and hence potentially having an even larger key space. So for our DFA resistance framework, we propose a ad hoc protection layer to protect existing block cipher against DFA. So the layer will consist of rounds of S boxes with linear structures. And we'll append it after the main cipher. So when an adversary were to inject fault at this protection layer, the search complexity will be lower bound as we discussed before. For example, is there'll be at least two to the x solutions, sub, uh, there'll be two to the x key solutions. So another strategy the adversary could do is to inject the fault in the main cipher and hope that it will propagate through the this layer and then launch the same attack at the last round of the main cipher. So to make this attack uh, costly, we want the the protection layer to have a differential upper bound of 2 to the minus x. So if the attacker wants to propagate the difference through this layer, they have to pay essentially the same cost as guessing the all the possible key candidates. And if the decryption oracle also requires some form of protection, then we can pre a layer as well. So when the adversary do the decryption, they can't do the fault inj injection as well because we have a layer protecting it. So next we will talk about default. So default is a full-fledged DFA resistance cipher 
is comprised with with the two ad hoc protection layer that we mentioned before, sandwiching a a core layer here, a core cipher here. So the raw function is inspired by give one to a, which for the default layer, it, it is a 28 rounds with four BS boxes that has four linear structures. And for the default core, it's a 24 round with four BS boxes, but without uh, the linear structure. Because with the linear structure, it's actually very bad for, it's very bad against differential, uh, the classical differential crypt analysis. So for the middle layer, we want it to have some form of protection against the classical differential crypt analysis. So, and for both layers, the, the permutation layer is the same, same as the give one to a bit permutation. And for every round, we also have a full state key addition. So this default layer can be used for protecting any existing cipher as well. So for example, if you have a GIF or AES, you can just put this def uh, default layer before and after the cipher. And since we are using 4-bit S-Box with four linear structures, the our security goal against DFA is 64-bit security. And for classical pure analysis, we still want to achieve the standard 1 to 8-bit security. Next, we talk about the hardware benchmarking results. So we compare GIF with, we compare default with GIF because they have very similar structure. And for, if we put the, def, uh, the default layer over GIF, this is the uh, benchmarking result. Alternatively, we can use the existing duplicate computation method Either we reuse the circuit and do the computation twice, then in that case, it will incur double the cycle. Or we can have two copies of the GIF circuit to do the duplicate computation in parallel. So here you can see that if we were to put the, to add the default layer on top of GIF, the area increment is actually very little, very, very small. And default is smaller than, default has a smaller area compared to both the duplication method. And for software benchmarking, you can see that default, we, we use GIF128 as a, as a reference. So we can see that default is slightly faster than doing a GIF duplicate implementation. And to conclude our work, we propose the first cipher layer DFA resilient framework by using S boxes with linear structure, which is usually not used in normal cipher design because it is bad for uh, differential crypt analysis. And through that, we can give a lower bound on the DFA key recovery complexity. And our ad hoc protection layer can be applied to any existing block ciphers to protect against DFA. And for we instantiate with a uh, four bit S boxes with linear structures and we present, propose a default layer, which is the ad hoc resist, DFA resistant layer that can be used to protect any block ciphers. Or, and also we propose a default, which is a full-fledged cipher that has the default layer sandwiching a default core layer. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you.